Well, what's up again there guys? Brian here, the three topics gamer here to share with you another one episode of my weekly QA titled People's Questions for Answer a series of questions have been sent to me over the past week. We got a solid number of questions for this episode, however, there were an also number of questions I was able to answer in the comment section. So if you don't hear them here, you guys will know where to look if you haven't already gotten a notification for. And like always, if you do happen to enjoy this video by the end, I would really appreciate it if you can give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to keep track of me in all my future videos. Uh, starting off with the uh, first question, uh, all these are pretty basic and I think they're all from pretty standard regular, so nobody knew this time. But the first question comes from Alur Cerna, and you want to know, I got something to ask since it's been bothering me since I watched your Assassin's Creed vs. series, but are the DLC exclusives in games like 3 and Origins, are they canon? Okay, uh... I'm aware that for 3, at least, that's not canon, but I did kind of state that. I was just like, look, if we made it canon, this is how I think it plays out. But if it's not canon, which I said I would prefer the not canon version, then this matchup would be a little bit tighter. The result was still the same. It was just how it would play out. And even for Origins, I stated that, I mean, I think those DLCs are canon, but I didn't take them into account. So, I didn't even count them, but as far as I know, those are canon, so, you know, that's, that's just what I think. Next question comes from CHS Celebrity, and you want to know, if I could pick the setting for the next Assassin's Creed game, what would it be? Feudal Japan. Come on, let's get some ninjas in here. I mean, ninjas are practically assassins. That would fit perfectly. Although, some people might say that Ghost of Tsushima is technically an Assassin's Creed game because of how much stealth is in there, but just, if you can make an official Assassin's Creed game, that's where I would set it. Next question comes from Shout Jesus Gaming, and you want to know what are my thoughts on Lucas Arts returning under the original name of Lucas Film Games? Well, I don't really care so much for the name as long as they give us some quality games that uh, that'll be fun to play and good to review and add to my collection. So, you know, Lucas Arts or Lucas Films or whatever they want to call it, just give me some good games, and heck, we won't have any problems. Next question comes from Phantom City. You want to know what is my opinion on what was the goal and what is the wait, in my opinion, what was the golden age of video gaming? I would say the golden age of video gaming was probably the 16-bit era, which, you know, preferably was, I want to say, early 1990s to mid-90s, or I think in the case of the Super Nintendo, I think that came out in 1989, so I guess late 80s to mid to semi-late 90s, pretty much the prime era of my childhood. And I think that would be considered the golden age just because I think that was the last era of gaming in which it actually required people to actually get better at games in order to progress. I mean, I'm not complaining about how where gaming is now, but one thing you cannot deny is that games nowadays are considerably easier than they used to be. I mean, games nowadays are designed to be beaten. You can always suggest the difficulty in order to make the game easier so you can progress. But back then, there were games that you generally had to get better in order to progress. Like, you couldn't play a game, like, something like a Mario game now is considerably easier. Try playing something like uh, Super Mario World. That was a game where you had to memorize patterns, you had to know what you were going up against. And trust me, the challenge factor definitely got harder as you progressed, but heck, that is kind of what you needed to. I mean, even some of the Mortal Kombat games, I think Mortal Kombat games, you had to get better to progress. And that mentality and idea no longer exists in modern games, and heck, these newer generations of gamers don't know anything about that. So when they start trying to play older retro games, they kind of have a really difficult time getting through those games and generally quit. But heck, that's kind of why I always tend to go back and play some of those older 16-bit games because that challenge factor is still there, which is non-existent in modern games. Not saying that modern games can't be significantly harder, they can, but the standard setting, the standards for those games were considerably higher than they are right now. And that is why, in my opinion, I consider that to be the, the golden age of gaming, or at least just for me personally. And the last question of the episode comes from Aaron Woodtaker. And you want to know, what do I think of the first two Fantastic Four films? Uh, they're not very good. Um, I hardly remember them. I think I saw each one of those once and then didn't want to watch them again. And I didn't even want to waste my time with the, the last one. And I'm not even a Fantastic Four fan. So, you know, and heck, I'm staying away from MCU films in general. So even whenever... You know, Disney gets a Fantastic Four film. I'm not gonna see it, and I have no interest in it. So, yeah, I I can't. I mean, heck, I'll I'll watch uh, the cartoon from Fox Kids. I mean, that was 
that had a pretty catchy uh, intro, uh, you know, intro theme song that I remember watching as a kid uh, on Saturday nights. But you know, that's probably the best, like, I guess, animated interpretation of the Fantastic Four that I know. So yeah, movies are not good. And I'll do it for this episode of the People's Questions. I'd like to thank everyone who sent in their questions. Remember, if you guys have any more questions you'd like me to answer in next week's episode, be sure to type them in the comments down below. But make sure you get to me before roughly Thursday, about around noonish, before I start filming the next episode. And if you want to increase your odds of having your question answered in the video, instead of the comments down below, just have them stand out or be interesting or be something I've never answered before or be a little bit personal. Heck, I look for challenges. So, like always, Thank you guys for watching, you're awesome, and I will see you next week.